One has to earn the right to sit at the table of extraordinary. I refuse to limit God. Partnership is the way to accelerate what God is doing in your life. The Bible says a man's gift will make room for him and bring him before the great. What is your gift? Because time is going to multiply back to you whatever you deposit into. And he says, because of what you have done, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Life. When you come into the house of God, you are in an environment that potentially could make you a great leader. A great... I want to encourage you today. You're about to catch your biggest net of fish. You're about to catch your biggest deal. You're about to step into a level of business that will redefine your business forever. Thank you, Father. Healing is the bread of the children. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. There's no mountain you want. There's no mountain you want. There's no mountain Jesus. There's no mountain you won't move. That's right, that's right, that's right. There's no sickness you won't heal. Come on, there's no sickness you won't heal. There's no mountain you won't move. There's no mountain you won't move. There's something flowing in the house. There's no sickness you won't heal. There's no sickness you won't heal. There's no mountain you won't move. There's no mountain you won't move. Sugar diabetes. There's no sickness Sugar you won't heal. There's no sickness Sugar you diabetes. won't heal. Right now. There's no sickness you won't heal. There's no sickness you won't heal. Sugar diabetes is being healed right now. There's no sickness you won't heal. 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 There's a flow of every knee. He's got to bow to the name of Jesus. Every knee got to bow to the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Every knee is to bow to the name of Jesus. Every knee is to bow to the name of Jesus. Every knee is to bow to the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to get ready to receive communion in the next few minutes. I want to finish reading the scriptures that I felt led by the Holy Spirit to read to you. The Holy Spirit just diverted my service early this morning as I got up and I was meditating on the service. He says, I want you to have a healing service. I want you to minister healing to my people. The Bible says in the book of Leviticus chapter 1 verse 5, it says, And he shall slay a young bull before the Lord, and Aaron's sons, the priests, shall offer up the blood and sprinkle the blood around the the altar that is at the doorway of the tent of meeting. Now there's a lot of prophetic things that we need to pick up from there, but just note that they were to sacrifice the bull, take the blood, and they were to sprinkle it at the um, around, um, sprinkle the blood around on the altar and at the door way of the tent of meeting you see satan satan understands certain principles that christians don't seem to understand christians love to debate things 
and we debate them from an intellectual perspective because we're spiritual babies. We don't understand spiritual things and we don't understand the word of God. We love to say, oh, Old Testament, New Testament. And while we are canceling out what the word of God has taught us, we're living defeated lives. We're dying at the same rate that the world is dying. We are sick at the same rate that the world is sick at. We are poor at the same rate that the world is poor at. We are suffering in the same way. When we have the word of God that we can use and apply to redefine our lives. So he says here you are to make a sacrifice. Sacrifice the bull. And you shall offer up the blood and sprinkle the blood around on the altar that is at the doorway of the tent of meeting. Now, everything operates on a principle of doorways. Everything operates on the principle of doorways. Or we can call them gateways. Or we can call them access points. You, as a human being, have got doorways, access points. Sickness and disease can only become a reality in your life if there's a breach of one of your doorways. And your doorways are, you know, when they, when they were telling us about corona, remember what they said. They said, make sure you don't touch what? Your mouth, your nose, your eyes. Why? Because they know that's your gateways. By doing that, the virus has access to your gateways. Why do we put masks on? Because your mouth is a gateway. How does sickness and disease come into your body? Through your ears. God has given us skin. What is the purpose of skin? It is to make us look beautiful, obviously, but it is also skin is a protection. It is a system of protection that protects us from things that want to come in and attack our body. So because we are covered in skins, Satan or sickness needs a gateway. What are the gateways? What I've already mentioned. Your mouth your nose, your eyes, your ears, and your sexual organs. That's why some sicknesses, syphilis, gonorrhea, and etc. access your body. It becomes a gateway. That's why you must live holy. Don't just go around sleeping with everything that walks around. Live in holiness. Live in purity. That's in the Bible. So sickness and disease became rampant in human existence when we violated the gateways. So by bringing the temple, which is a picture of our lives, spirit, soul, body, outer courts, inner courts, holy of holies, it is a picture of who we are. Your body is the temple of God. So God is telling us here that we are to take the blood and put it on the altar, which is by the doorway to the tent of meeting. What does that mean? You are to take the blood. That's why... In fact, the scripture that we have further down in the book now then goes on to talk about the sacrifice that was to be done for the leper, the one who had leprosy. And how was he to be cleansed? He was to go to the priest who was to, and he was to bring with him seven things. And all of this is in the book. Please place a request for the book. The book is available as a free gift. And I want to encourage you share when we send it to you share it with as many people you can help somebody avoid sickness getting getting uh, staying healthy is better than getting healed getting healed means you got the disease and you got healed praise god healing is available but god's best is for you to stay healed so send it to somebody before they get sick before you hear the report that my mom is sick send her this book if your mom can't read get somebody to read the book to her so the leper was to bring seven things and again seven is symbolic and very significant number one he was to bring two birds turtle doves alive and clean number two he was to bring cedar wood number three he was to bring scarlet number four he was to bring hyssop number five he was to bring water Number six, he was to bring oil. And number seven, he was to bring fine flour. 
And as he brought this to the priest, he was to follow a ritual. And this is what Jesus said to the lepers, that the leper that came and God cleansed. He says, now go and show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifice according to what was written in the books of Moses. And this is what he was talking about. So what was supposed to be done? One bird was to be killed, talking about the death of Jesus. One bird was to be soaked in the running water mixed with blood and then let out to fly, talking about the resurrection. So the death, the burial, the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus was right here in the book of Leviticus. And then the, the, the cedar wood was to be put in the bucket that has the water mixed with blood, talking about the cross of Jesus that was mixed with the blood and the water. When Jesus died on the cross, blood was flowing from him, and when they pierced him on the side, the Bible says blood and water came out of his side. And this was the picture, the pattern that God had already shown us. Healing is available for you today. The hyssop, hyssop was a plant. Hyssop was a plant that they would, it, it's just a, a, a herb, a plant that, uh, that's similar to what we today would call a choba if you, are, if you speak in Devele. If you go to one of these sangomas, you know, I went to many sangomas before I got healed. My father sent me right across from, from province to province in Zimbabwe looking for healing. I was asthmatic. I had migraine headaches. I had poor eyesight. I was a very sickly man. My father sent me everywhere and I remember they would take this goat's, goat's tail and put it in a, a mixture of blood and snuff and blood and all kinds of things and water and mix it and then make weird sounds and then sprinkle me with this and then throw salt on me and do all kinds of things. I never got healed because that stuff was demonic. But the day I walked into Word of Life, in fact this, it, it was the second or third week I walked into Word of Life. The pastor, Dr. Goodwill China, laid hands on me, prayed for me, laid hands on me, and anoint. And I don't remember if there was anointing oil, but he laid hands on me. I fell under the power of God, and I rose up from that floor healed. A week later, and up until now, no asthma attack, no migraine headaches, no issues, except the incident that I write about in the book three years ago when I had high blood pressure and I nearly died. I want you to know that God is a healing God. So the story in this book is real. It is my first hand encounter with death and with a healing God. So the hyssop was a plant that they would put into the water mixed with blood and sprinkle seven times over the person that had leprosy as a sign of their cleansing. That talks about the washing of the word. Titus talks about it, the New Testament talks about the washing and the regeneration by the word. So we're washed by the cleansing of the word. The Naaman was told to go and wash in the Jordan River and baptize himself seven times, soak himself seven times. And he came up the seventh time and he was healed. Why? Because God is a healing God. And the word of God is the foundation for our healing. So the, the hyssop was used to sprinkle the leper with, with the oil and the water. Water spoke of the word. Oil talked about the anointing. And then the fine flour, which was the sacrifice, talking about the bread, the body of the Lord. So after this whole ceremony was done, the priest would then anoint with blood and then with oil the, the right thumb of the, the leper, the right toe of the leper, and the right earlobe that was talking about i'm cleansing your walk so that your walk is pleasing to the lord i'm cleansing your work and the work of your hands that they are pleasing to the lord and i'm cleansing and anointing your hearing so that you don't hear nonsense a lot of you are sick today because you're listening to the nonsense that is going on on media platforms Every new piece of data that comes, you're listening. What's the latest? What's the latest? What's the breaking news on Corona? What's the next thing? I mean, everybody right now is waiting to hear what the president is going to say tonight. And when you listen, listen with the word of God in your ear, with the anointing. Let the Holy Ghost filter everything that you need to keep out. Let him filter it out. So what you hear is only what God is saying. If you hear stats like the fourth wave and the fifth wave and the sixth wave is coming, don't let fear come in and say, 
the fifth wave is coming, so I'm going to get the fifth wave and the fourth wave and the third wave. No, when you hear the declaration of a fourth wave, what do you do? You stand and you say, Father, I thank you. Me and my household will not be a victim of the fourth wave. We are protected by the blood. I stand at the gateway, at the doorway, at the access point as the head, the highest authority in this family. And I declare sickness, disease, corona, infection, fourth wave. You will not come into this home. You exert your authority by the words that you speak. That is putting up the blood by the altar. And then when the priest was done with, with the whole ceremony of sprinkling them, putting the blood on the oil on their thumb, toe and ear, the next thing that he would do is he would pour this whole concoction over the leper and then give him a certificate of cleanliness. So it was the blood that gave the healing. Just like you get a certificate or a clean bill of health and they say you've quarantined yourself for 14 days or for whatever number of days you're supposed to quarantine yourself after that they say okay you're now clean from the virus now we sanctify you by the blood and by the word and by the oil and we call you healed in jesus name so this was the process now to close off i want to quickly touch on this when jesus christ came to die on the cross he shared his blood and again he shared his not just one blood but he shared seven bloods. Jesus shared seven bloods. Why? Because Cain shared Abel's bloods seven places, seven points. So now Jesus had to reverse everything that was done in the garden and establish something new for you and me. So I want to quickly go through that and just have this in your mind because we're now going to receive communion. When Jesus Christ came, number one, in Luke chapter 22, verse 44, he shed his blood in the garden. The Bible says he prayed and his, and his sweat became like great drops of blood that fell to the ground. And the blood falling to the ground was to redeem the productivity of the earth that was affected by what had happened in the garden, the first garden in Genesis. This means God desires for you to have economic capacity restored to you. Sickness and disease invading your body can affect your finances, can affect your, I mean, just a COVID test is 800 rand. Just getting some medication is another 1,000 and something. Getting your vitamins, getting all of that, that's a whole lot of money going into the, the into the system of satan when you could make the investment into your life so satan wants to affect you by sickness and disease number two if you look at isaiah 50 verse 6 isaiah 50 verse 6 and matthew chapter 27 verse 26 jesus shared his blood when he was whipped the bible says by his stripes we are healed he was wounded the bible says he was so whipped and that whip had thorns and and hooks in it so every time they whipped him those nine hooks would go deep into his flesh and then they would pull and flesh came off his body until the bible says in the book of psalms you could number my bones or my ribs his flesh was torn from him until you could see his ribs that's how bad it was and that was paying the price for your healing jesus was scourged with a whip that was designed to tear the flesh from his body the cat of nine tails that's what it was called we had sharp hooks on it that were designed to pull the scourging was so severe that many died during this process even before they got to the cross this represents jesus or god's healing plan for you and me every disease was represented by that whip and by that strip that that hit his body so we can receive healing today because of what he did we receive healing on the basis of what jesus did number three this is in john chapter 19 and verse 2 jesus had a thorn a, a crown of thorns put on his head the crown of thorns thorns in the middle east are generally all poisonous particularly the larger thorns that they would use that grow on trees, are poisonous. So his head received poisonous thorns that sunk into his skull, sunk into his flesh. He was poisoned in his mind. 
so that your mind can be restored that's why paul writes to timothy and he makes this in the bible says in the book of timothy it states god has not given you the spirit of fear what has he given us the spirit of power love and a sound mind we have soundness of mind because his mind was poisoned we can have peace and overcome fear today because jesus christ paid the ultimate price for you that means your mind can think productively and you can be creative in your thinking and have your mind fully restored so if there's alzheimer's if there's dementia if there's autism if there's any cognitive decline disease in your life your mom your grandmother is beginning to lose her memory you can claim this promise right now in the name of jesus i stand with everybody that's believing god for a miracle in their mind cognitive decline i rebuke you in the name of jesus every degenerative condition in the human mind and thinking and memory loss i rebuke you in the name of jesus let healing come let a miracle come my god you're a god of miracles there's a flow of the power and the glory of god there's a flow of the power and the glory of god and then if you read in isaiah chapter 50 verse 6 and isaiah 52 verse 14 they plucked out jesus's beard while they were torturing him this left his face bloody beyond recognition he lost his identity so that you and i could regain ours we have an identity in christ we know who we are whose we are we are in christ we are born again children of god and we are restored the image and likeness of god has been restored in our lives because of what jesus did that was blood number four blood number five as they were crucifying him they pierced his feet and nailed his feet to the cross the piercing of his feet restored our walk of dominion over creation every place where the soles of your feet shall tread he says i have given to you we walk in our god-given authority to take territory for the kingdom of god that's our current series that we've been teaching today we just went into this because by instruction of the holy spirit but our current series is taking the marketplace taking dominion in the marketplace he his feet were pierced so that he could restore our authority our walk so that every place where you tread you are treading and you're leaving a mark of the blood so every time every time you receive communion every time you receive the blood guess what the blood is being shed from his head from his face from his back the sweat from his hands from his feet every place that he shed you're leaving a mark so you leave a mark in business you leave a mark in the economic arena financial arena you leave a mark in your mind and your mind is not anxious and afraid and fretful one of the biggest access points for satan to access your life is a thing called fear so in the book we talk about stop the fear break the cycle of fear thank you lord jesus and then after that the bible says his hands were pierced they pierced his hands and feet with nails in order to set us free from all guilt and condemnation there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus the bible says the handwriting that was against us was nailed to the cross this enables us to receive redemption by grace through faith not because of our own righteousness glory to god forevermore you need to give thanks right now and say thank you lord that i'm redeemed thank you lord that i'm washed thank you lord that i have access thank you lord that the handwriting that was against me was nailed to the cross and therefore i am free glory to god and then blood number seven have you ever have you ever i don't know if you've ever gone to when when i when i was diagnosed i had to go and do some medical tests and so on and my my doctor says they're going to have to take some bloods and it's interesting that even doctors use the same phrases that the bible uses 
And sometimes as Christians, we don't understand what's going on. They say, Pastor, you're going to, we're going to have to take some bloods. So tomorrow, don't eat. Go and uh, they told me a place where I was supposed to go and sit there. And they put these things in me and began to draw bloods. They took little bottles. I don't know how many of those little bottles of bloods they took from me. But the doctors call it, we're, taking, we're going to take bloods from you. Now, in the same way, they took bloods from Jesus. In the same way, they took bloods from Abel. So you've got to understand the language. You've got to understand what's going on here. So the seventh blood that was shared was the blood from his side. Psalm 22, verse 14, John chapter 19, verse 34. Bible, the, the Bible tells us that they pierced him on the side to make sure. They were trying to make sure that he was, he was dead or that he would be dead by evening. So they pierced him on the side. And the soldiers pierced Jesus on the side with a spear and blood and water came out from the wound. And this represents the birth of the church, a redeemed church that was washed by the water and purged by the blood. We have the same blood as Jesus. We carry the same identity. We carry the same authority. We carry the same name. That's why we are the church. Of Jesus remember the scripture we read earlier on it says the firstborn well we are the second born we are the, the the same blood with Jesus you cannot be sick you cannot be sickly you cannot be oppressed in your body healing and health is your inheritance and your portion let me read one last statement here then we pray and receive communion and again I want to encourage you if you don't have the book, place an order for the book right now. We will send it to you on WhatsApp. We will send it to you on email. We can send it to you on, um, on, on any electronic platform that is convenient for you. And you can have a free copy of the book. We want you healed. We want our generation healed and whole and healthy. We want to silence every plan and strategy of Satan. How do you make this work for you? By receiving communion. The greatest truth that we learn from this is that we have become one with Christ through the blood. This gives us full access. Somebody type right there, I have full access. This gives us full access to all that he paid the price for. Receiving communion gives you full access. It gives you full access. We are heirs joint heirs we have access full access to everything that was paid for the moment we get the revelation we can fully appropriate our our covenant rights as children of god this is the basis of a stubborn faith that refuses to settle for anything less than what jesus paid for We can have a stubborn faith today that says i refuse to settle for anything less than what he paid for he paid the full price for my healing he paid the full price for my restoration he paid the full price for me to be made whole so now i can enjoy my covenant rights so i want to pray with you right now i want to join faith with you you've got your bread you've got your bread i need some bread i think I left my bread down there somewhere. I need some bread and we need some wine. Well, this is juice that represents what Christ did for us as we get ready to receive communion. The Bible says, First Corinthians chapter 11. Oh, you better thank God. Healing is yours. Your miracle is here right now. It says here, we'll read from verse 23. It says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I have delivered unto you. Now, I want you to notice that phrase because... We always read it so fast, we miss out on what he is saying here. I have received from the Lord. Now we read in Hebrews, the scripture that connects to this statement. 
about how the Lord gave him the instruction for communion. So to not, be ta to not take communion is to violate something that the Lord said we must do. The whole of the Old Testament is teaching us how a people were redeemed and atoned by the blood of bulls and goats. In the New Testament, we don't use the blood of bulls, goats, and turtle doves. We use the blood of Jesus or the bloods of Jesus as we have read. So now notice Paul says, I have received of the Lord that which I delivered to you. I received this from the Lord. I didn't receive it from Peter. I didn't receive it from James. I didn't receive it from anybody. I received this that I'm giving to you. I received it from the Lord. Now, where did he receive it from the Lord? When we re read in the book of Ephesians, the word of God says in Ephesians that it, God gave him these truths by revelation. When we read in the book of Acts, the book of Acts helps us to see that after he got saved, he went away for a period of time. And that period of time is when he had encounters with the Lord. And God began to entrust him with the revelation that is now revealed in the letters that he wrote to the church. About how we become one with Christ. In Christ we are. In him, in whom, through whom, by whom. We have become one with Christ. I am in Christ. And Christ is in me. I am in God. And God is in me. We are one. And because we are one, we have victory. So communion. Is about remembering this. It is about bringing this to priority. I've often taught and I've mentioned this before. That the word remember, we're going to see it just now, is a covenant word. It's a covenant word. Remember doesn't mean you had a loss of memory and then suddenly you remembered. It means to prioritize. To bring to priority. To make priority. To bring to the table. So... Let's read, for I have received of the Lord that which I have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. In the same night in which he was taken up, he took bread. He took the bread. He took the bread. And when he took the bread, the Bible says, and when he had given thanks, he break it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body. That is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So when he took the bread, he broke the bread. And he says, this is my body. So he was saying we are partakers of the body of the Lord. We are partakers of his flesh. We eat his flesh. So I have a wafer here. So I want you to take your communion, your bread right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we break bread together today. Every minister, every, every person ministering in his building right now, we are standing in agreement with you. And we're receiving communion for you, believing for a miracle right now. My goodness, I sense something is about to break in somebody's life. I sense somebody, something's about to break in somebody's life. I sense something's about to lift off. There's a spirit of heaviness lifting off of your life right now. There's a, there's a burden and oppression that was over your mind. Somebody right now, it was over your mind. It's lifting off. Somebody else, it was on your neck. You had a burden. You had something oppressing you around your neck and shoulder area. It's lifting. You foul spirit in the name of Jesus. You foul oppression. I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. And I command you, loose. Let it go right now in the name. That is above every name. Loose. Lord, not only leave her body, not only leave that person's body, but leave the house in the name. That is above every name. Leave that house now in the name of Jesus. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. It's leaving your home. It's leaving your home. It's leaving your home. It's leaving your home. That oppression leaves your home, leaves your environment in the name of Jesus. 
every oppression every bondage every foul demonic presence that has been in your home as we partake of the body of the lord we declare your home is a sacred altar your home is an access point your home is a gateway i declare right now everything that was having access to your family access to your marriage access to your children access to your business access to your finances i bind in the name of jesus if you've been living in sin you need to repent right now if you've been living in fornication living in sin i don't know what it is you've been you've been living in sin allowing sin into your life you are addicted to substances you're addicted to to alcohol to drugs you're addicted to to certain content that is unsavory pornography sin filth and so on you need to repent right now begin to say father i repent of sin forgive me for living in sin in the name of jesus that was an access point that was a gateway satan could access your life through that habit through sin when you allow sin into your life you're allowing stuff that's going to cause your, your your environment to be contaminated repent right now repent right now repent in the name of jesus in the name that is above every name father we repent we ask you to forgive us for living in sin forgive us of pornography forgive us for fornication forgive us for lying forgive us for living in unholiness forgive us for committing adultery forgive us father in the name of jesus the bible says if you confess your sin he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness so you're forgiven, you're cleansed, you're made whole, you're made clean right now. In the name of Jesus. So receive and say, thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. Bible says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man makes much power available. And when we pray, the prayer offered up in faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. God's raising you up right now. So, Father, we receive the flesh of jesus we receive it right now receive it right where you are in the name of jesus oh we bless you lord we bless you thank you for the body thank you for the freedom that comes from your word that comes from your promises verse 25 says and in the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped saying so he took the cup and he said this cup is the new testament now that is so loaded my goodness my goodness there's just so much there's just so much this cup is the new testament in my blood this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me in other words you prioritize my kingdom you prioritize my word you prioritize the promises you prioritize the covenant terms you prioritize what has been agreed so father we prioritize today oh we prioritize you your death your burial your resurrection it is priority to us we prioritize what you did for us on the cross we prioritize our covenant with you we prioritize serving you we prioritize worshiping you we prioritize ministering to you it is priority to us thank you thank you for the bloods that were shared <laughs> there's a covenant of prosperity a covenant of healing a covenant of soundness of mind a covenant of deliverance a covenant of dominion and authority and a covenant of freedom the bloods that were shared <laughs> oh there's a family right now that is watching this there's a family that is watching this service right now god is about to do something supernatural in your home there's been depression 
heaviness. There's been division and strife. Husband and wife, you, can't, you cannot get along. You could not get along. Things were bad. Things were bad. As a husband and a wife, you have a covenant of blood. Blood was shed. When you consummated your marriage and God is saying, I'm restoring the, the, the unity. I'm restoring the holiness in that marriage. I'm restoring the unanenge. I pray for your family. I rebuke the spirit of divorce. I rebuke the spirit of oppression and heaviness and strife that has been operating in your home i rebuke it right now in the name that is above every name you foul oppression you foul spirit of strife you foul spirit of depression you foul spirit of oppression you loss of confidence in the children loss of confidence in the home i bind you now and i command you in the name that is above every name loose that family let them go now 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 not only leave their bodies and their minds leave the home this cup is the new testament in my blood Soreba shakata kerandolo brosto kora manda rabo shakata ya rekata ya la mando rororo bo shabakai reto la la mande de 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 bo sovero bakaro mande. Somebody today, as you drink the blood, you're gonna sense a heat going down your stomach. Your your digestive system is getting healed. Ulcers getting healed. Pain in your abdomen getting healed period pains getting healed abdominal cramps womb cramps getting healed in the name of jesus from this day no more complications during your period monthly period in the name of jesus the power of the blood is setting you free setting you free making you whole making you well father in the name of jesus we give you thanks we give you praise we give you glory thank you for the blood thank you that the blood of jesus speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Now I want you to receive the blood. Lift up your hands. Begin to thank the Lord. Begin to thank the Lord. Come and thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord right there in your home right there is a family thank the lord thank god no more ulcers no more heart disease no more cancer thank god 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 healing healing the doors are closed the doors are closed, the doors to sickness, the doors to oppression, the doors to panic attack, the doors to the spirit of fear. Close right now. In the name that is above every name. Oh, we give you thanks. Thank you jesus i'm telling you there's just such a strong anointing i'm going to read my last scripture as we get ready to close the service 
and then we're going to sing that song that's a beautiful flow right there and then we're going to sing this song i want to read a passage of scripture which is the basis of the of the book exodus chapter 23 But I'm going to read more scriptures than just the one on the book. I want to read from verse... I'll read from verse 14. Allow me to read from verse 14 and we read all the way. We'll read 11 verses here. He says, Three pilgrimages or festivals shall you celebrate for me during the year pick up the keyboard a little bit i need that you shall observe the festival of matos or unleavened bread what we have just done you shall seven days shall you eat matos unleavened bread as i have commanded you at the appointed time of the month of springtime for in it you left egypt and you shall not be seen before me empty-handed what is he saying he's saying as you come and receive your communion and worship and minister to the lord he says you shall not appear before me empty-handed you bring an offering you bring your tithe you bring your seed why because that's our act of worship it is our act of serving god before you get upset and you think okay offering offering i want you to listen carefully because this is where the miracle is this is where the activation of this supernatural thing is listen carefully you shall not appear before me empty-handed and the festival of harvest of the first fruits of your labor that you sow in the field and the festival of in gathering in the close of the year when you gather in your work from the field three times during the year shall all your men folk appear before the lord or hashem notice three times a year shall the men appear before the lord why men the reason he was saying this is because men are the heads and the coverings of the home so as a man as a father as a husband you need to understand your role as a covering for the family we do understand that there are families where there's no mom no dad i mean there's no dad but just the mom there are some families that have no mom and dad but it's just the children but whichever there's always the person with the highest authority that person is the covering for that family so you are to appear before the lord and activate spiritual things for the rest of the people that are under your jurisdiction you shall not offer the blood of my feast offering upon leavened bread nor may he sorry no may the fat of my festive offering remain overnight until morning the choicest first fruit of your land shall you bring to the house of hashem your god that means you bring your offering you bring your seed you bring your tithes you bring your gift so i want to encourage you you'll see banking details there if you need to give to the lord this is the time to give this is the time to sow this is the time to activate your miracle because we're going to be praying for marketplace financial and economic miracles just now so it says verse 19 the choicest of your first fruit of your land shall you bring to the house of hashem your god you shall not cook the uh, cook a kid in the milk of its mother that carries a whole lot of connotations to it for another day verse 20 behold i send an angel before you to protect you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have made ready. Now we read in Hebrews, uh, he talks about an innumerable host of angels. There are angels that are prepared. There are in angels that have been prepared. 
that are being sent out and as they go out they are preparing a place they are preparing for you they are preparing clients they are preparing business they are preparing opportunity they are preparing finances they are preparing a release of resources god is preparing on your behalf and then he says in verse 21 beware of him and hearken to his voice do not rebel against him for he will not forgive your willful sin for my name is within him for if you hearken to the voice to his voice and carry out all that he shall speak then i shall be an enemy to your enemies and i will persecute your persecutors for the angel shall go before you and bring you to the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Canaanite, the Hivite, the Jebusite, and I will annihilate them. And then he says, do not prostrate yourself to their gods. Do not worship them, nor act according to their practice. Rather, you shall tear them apart and you shall smash there are pillars now notice how it then connects because this is a whole flow how it connects with what we're talking about the healing the giving the offering the worship the serving the lord verse 25 says you shall worship and worship in a jewish or hebrew context is the shema hear o israel the lord your god the lord is one and you shall love the lord your god with all your heart soul and resources so he says, you shall shima, you shall worship Hashem, your God. So worship is an important part of the miraculous. You shall worship and worship is not just the singing. It's the giving. It's the living holy. It's the confession. It's the closing doors to the devil. You shall worship Hashem, your God. And, you, and he shall bless your bread and your water. And he shall remove illness from your midst why your bread and your water your bread and your water is what brings sickness and disease into your life and he says there shall no woman who loses her young or is infertile in your land what causes infertility and premature births it is the food the chemicals we're taking into our body but god is saying i'll reverse it so fertility is coming to you god says i will cause you to be fruitful you will have a child you will get pregnant you will become a mother you will have children he says that none will be infertile in the land i shall feel the number of your days i shall feel the number of your days now as we close i'm done we're gonna sing that song and we're gonna worship the lord so i want you right now to lift up your hands right there in your home right there where you're watching lift up your hands and we worship the lord we give him praise we give him glory we magnify you lord you are healed you are delivered you are free your business will prosper you will come out of debt you will live debt free Every curse of poverty and lack is broken. You are in covenant with the King of Kings. I bless you today. The Lord causes face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord surround you as the mountains surround Jerusalem. The Lord be gracious to you, to your children, and to your children's children. The Lord establish you. The Lord lift you up, separate you, establish you, and cause you to flourish. As you sow your seed, as you give up your tithes, as you worship the Lord, as you receive communion, as you anoint your family and your home the Lord cause great grace to abound in your home I bless you today none will die in your home none none of your children will die your parents will live and not die I release healing I release supernatural intervention I release breakthroughs in the name of Jesus I call you debt free I call you prosperous I call you successful I call you preserved in the name of Jesus now lift up your hands begin to worship him you give life you are love you bring light to the darkness you give hope 
you restore yes. every heart that is broken, Lord, and great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lands, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lands, so we pour out our praise to you only. It's you breath in our lands, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's you breath in our lands, so we pour out our praise to you only. It's you breath in our lands, yeah. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's you breath in our lands. So we pour out our praise to you all, it's you breath in our lands. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's you breath in our lands. So we pour out our praise to you only. Yeah. Oh, Shia. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. bless you receive your miracle today water he turned into wine water he turned into wine we're done now we're clogging off may god bless you he's turning situations around for you today is a day of miracles take a miracle get deliverance get freedom walking is increased walking is supernatural power and provision this is your day god bless you Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Not like you. Oh. Unto the darkness you shine. Heart of one has to earn the right to sit at the table of extraordinary. refuse to limit God. Partnership is the way to accelerate what God is doing in your life. The Bible says a man's gift will make room for him and bring him before the great. What is your gift? Because time is going to multiply back to you whatever you deposit into. And he says because of what you have done, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Life. When you come into the house of God, you are in an environment that potentially could make you a great leader. A great I want to encourage you today. You are about to catch your biggest net of fish. You are about to catch your biggest deal. You are about to step into a level of business that will redefine your business forever.